pull up like Wiz passed up on that beat. So it's like and then came back to it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like like six months later. But so so when you made pull up, were you like, this is definitely for Wiz? But he just I didn't thought, see yeah, it. I thought, yeah, because we were making that was like right before we were making like Cabin Fever Three. So like I was like making a lot of like you know those trappish type beats real simple let's be honest you're not gonna find these videos anywhere else why because i make them so it would really help me out if you subscribe if you've already subscribed what also really helps is if you like the video and leave a comment it's hard in the era of clickbait videos on youtube and negativity in the producer community and i appreciate your support thank you so much even in your your publishing deal with sony they're now more open to collaboration situations even with producers that aren't associated with with the publishing label yes because essentially they're still looking for new talent and i think the name of the game right now is getting the record out there's so many records that are uploaded there's what sixty-five thousand songs uploaded to spotify a day it's a song a second on one platform so it's like they're really trying to get the record done but i feel like you know this all it's also to like publishing companies, they don't care how popping you are. Like that's the one thing too. Publishing companies don't care if you're like, if you have a hundred thousand followers on Instagram, like they don't. They care about your talent and what you can do or potentially do if they put you in a room with somebody or some other creatives. Cause when I first got my publishing deal, they didn't put me in the studio with artists. They put me in other producers, other writers, Like you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it teaches you how to be a team player and then if you could bring more to the table as well, I don't think that they're they're hating on that because ultimately I feel like the office people don't know what's going on either. You know, like they don't know what the sound is. They don't know how to make no beats. They don't know how to sit there and automate a fucking effect or nothing like that. So I feel like since world since the music's getting worldly and it's since the technology, I feel like it's a lot easier. Like that they would rather it be almost like a team player th type thing. Because imagine one person like Manny Fresh, how he used to do. Like that 400 Degrees album. He produced every song on there. From scratch, only sampled one song, which he sampled himself. Not a lot of people can do that. Not a lot of people are, not, not a lot of labels are open to an artist executive producing a whole project. They're just not. So I feel like it's, it's, it's we have to do that. I feel, I, I feel like as creators, we need to stop beefing, man. We need to stop beefing. There's like it's already a two-headed horse against us, corporate and legal. So it's like they don't want to pay us regardless if you are a Ricky P or a startup guy anyway. Like, you know, they can hit you with the net 30 and then not do it. So um my focus has really been creating with more and allowing the opportunities to 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 fester. You know what I'm saying? Like the older that you get, they always say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I don't believe that shit. It's like if you keep being around youthful pups, they're going to show you some things and you could show them some things. And that's just a whole room of knowledge. And that's how you build a real work relationship. That's how I build relationships with these guys. If I show you some things and you show me some things like, damn, we're exchanging information. It's not like, oh, damn, I could work with Ricky P because I could get a placement. It's like, no, we're building here. So whenever we do submit shit, it's cool. We don't got to worry about whenever the paperwork done. We already know who's going to do this, get that, all that shit, because we built a work rapport. Like, you, you know, a lot of these kids are like email friends. So it's like you got to build like this thing, this face value of a, of a collaboration and stuff like this, which you guys are doing. It's allowing cats that like, you know, it's the shot. Like you said, take them chances. This is your chance. You never know. You might have some heat. A lot of my friends that I work with, they might not have a whole bunch of followers on Instagram, but I know they have terabytes worth of heat, terabytes worth of heat. So this is that chance right now. And I got like you guys are doing a great thing. Beat Stars is definitely there's no other platform out here right now that's like doing that right now. They're just not, unless it's like yeah. a, a blog site that's telling you to pay for submissions, yeah. like so we can listen to your. You know what I'm saying? Pay me twenty five dollars so I can listen to your loops. Like that's fucking bullshit. Like stop it, bro. Like stop it. Like somebody's Quincy Jones or something. Like <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you said that. Like, I, I think that shit is just like, you know, but once again, that's the creatives attacking other creatives versus just like, you know, trying to make the music, make the music. Then the, the labels have to pay us. Then they'll have to pay us. Make the good music. If we stick together and know how to talk with each other and know how to stand in solidarity, then whenever they do the weird shit behind the scenes, it won't happen as much because it's like, yo, we're all on the same page. We're not sitting there like that. But, you know, it's kind of hard when everybody has different lawyers. 
you know, so. Yeah, that that's a fair point. I mean, you know, the lawyers work for us anyway, so we. But they still want to be on a winning team. Come on, right. man. So we Come could on, communicate man. that more. Pay, an artist paying them versus the label paying them. That's that's some you know that's extra couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand on top of that hourly wage that they're getting. Yeah. From. You know what I'm saying? My my attorney seven fifty an hour, but shit, I'm bet you any money them corporate attorneys. You know what I'm saying? Fifteen hundred more an hour. And you don't think your attorney, like he might love you, but you don't think at some point he still kind of want to be on a winning team. Everybody wants to inspire to be the best and work around the best in their fields. So we got to be honest with ourselves. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't just want to be the top producer. You don't think your, your attorney wants to be the top like attorney or be around the other attorneys that are like doing what he's doing, you know? So if we as creatives stop with this whole pedestal shit to start working with cats, man, like, if you don't like them, you don't like them. Cool, whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like a rapper, like, oh, I don't like that beat. Next beat. Like, who cares? Like, if we take that out of it. Cause like we put our love into this shit. But like, man, like, if you really understand the business, it's like, man, fuck that. Fuck that. But luckily we have beat stars and stuff like this looped in that that breaks that. That breaks the, the ice. And you're sitting there saying $200 million dished out to its users. This isn't a label. This is a label. This is something independent. Like you could really be out here. I'll be seeing them tweet all the cats that be showing like their beat, like their like their sales and stuff like that, man. And like, if you're a producer nowadays, if you're not in the room with these artists, you need to be on this. You need to be on the beat star stuff. You need to be sitting here tapping into these things because you're you're one fucking looped in uh, session away from collaborating with somebody you really like and then who knows that could really get you in that door like damn we might not get a placement but they might start hitting you up for you know what I'm saying more loops or just you know shit if you're in the city pull up to the studio I'm always sir like pull up to the studio pull up to the studio if you're in LA I don't care if you're up and coming like at least be able to be around it if you want to be in the NFL you got to sit on the NFL field what do you think they do in division one college football they bring you to the stadium they put let you try on the, the stuff and then they you get to take a photo shoot and then you're down on the sidelines all the games on and you hang out with the like the, the players that you think you could be like that's the same thing we should be doing and i thank you guys for bringing me on to stuff like this and it allows me to do my small part in telling these gats like yo man reach out to these kids like or to these guys that you think is too cool you never know i answer i look at my dm all the time if it's something stupid i might not answer it but if like if it's something like you know we could start the process Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I give out my email all the time. Like, all right. This is a big conversation happening in the chat. Is there a Kush Factory strain? Yes. Uh, Kush Factory, we have. <coughs> oh, you sounding sound like me right now. <coughs> no COVID. <coughs> Kush Fact. <coughs> I'm smoking some nerds right now. We have Nihilators, Nerds, Vibranium, and Envy <coughs> are the Kushback official flavors. They're all <coughs> they're all hybrid, indica-based uh, hybrids, but man, woo, and I'm off the nerds right now. And just so I could be a nerd <coughs> while cooking up these loops, you know? All right, speaking of which, you ready to get started listening to these loops? Like, I can't wait, personally. <laughs> For sure, I hell yeah, man. Names in there. I already know there's some heat in here. I already know there's some heat. Y'all ain't going to. Put me on no bullshit. <coughs> I won't be able to see y'all how I'm set up right now, but it's cool. It's more, more about y'all seeing what the fuck I'm doing. Audio clips, beat stars. Oh shit. Let me do this. Oh, that first one was hard. Yeah, I might just fuck around and just load it up. Let's not, let's not even play. DJ Payne said that first one was hard. I gotta ask, what gross beat preset was that? Was that something you created, or was that like a? Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's a uh, it's a preset that I, I created. Um, 
Shout out my homie, the Wave God. Uh, we were just in here cooking up, and I'm obsessed with making trap beats. That's like kind of like my go-to thing. And uh, when I get uh, loops or anything like that, I kind of have like, as you can see, a couple different gross beat setups, um, some effect tricks going on, a simple uh, FL little EQ, and this effect rack. I don't know if you guys have uh, sound toys, but I love effect rack. Um, you can sit here and be obviously you see uh, different. Uh, I have a crystallizer, Echo Boy, Primal Tap. Um, I sometimes I I do bypass this tremulator because sometimes I do like uh, you know what I'm saying just kind of making some shit wobble, especially if it's like a piano, kind of give it that roadsy kind of feel. But um, it kind of it slows everything down because it's like I, it's not like a a pitch shift like how it's like halftime. I kind of like pitch shifted it slightly a little bit another little uh time throw off and then like a whole bunch of just cool effectrix things that so i usually take this one off so let's ride see how it gets a little bit more of the uh the shit because if i do take it off it's like I like kind of makes it real just like like the trap almost like dirty trap came up off of like three six mafia type shit so like the darker the better they put started putting some drums in his mouth and by the way yo i've been saving me but y'all cats need to start using midi and shit to help you out with efficiency and speed and like all that shit yeah. By the way, I have so many drum kits, but like be honest with you, I use pretty much like the same drums almost on every drum on every beat. I'm like a Pharrell type cat, like just keep using that motherfucker. Who cares? It's like that's we your actually sound. got a question about that in the chat, and they were asking if you ever plan on releasing a, a Ricky P drum kit. Um, I'm indifferent about that. I love doing that shit, but like, isn't everybody just giving me what I already have? Just with their own. Would be yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? So uh, I pro I I have one on on deck, like because I'm a I ain't gonna lie, I'm OCD. You gotta go through all the shits, but like I I have two different things where I like collected all like my favorites. <laughs> Which I'll pretty much give every like I'm like if I'm going to give out a kit, it's going to literally just be Ricky P favorites. You're going to they're like you know what I'm saying. They're going to be the actual drums that I use, not like yo I'm gonna just tweak these ones. Like no, I'm I use these ones. I use pretty much like the same thing. Um, if anything, I might give out a preset uh like kit for like any of these like you see like these mixer presets and stuff like that, like because. I don't know. I feel like everybody has the same fucking drums. We all have the same drums. I'm pretty sure me and you, DJ Payne, have the same exact drums. They might not be organized the same, but we pretty much have the same ones. Yeah, I'm sure. But to be honest with you, I've been using my homies, the young homies. Shout out uh, Alex going crazy. I'm using uh, his spins version of his uh, the spins 808. Like right now. <laughs> Did this, I could probably change this. With samples, I always try to sit there like, I right, bet, like, what is going to be because I like how he separated the shit like this. I noticed that's like a trend where they'll like separate everything, but be honest with you, I just keep it real efficient. Where's that at in the, in the sample? I think it's like the second four bars yet. 
Yeah. Yeah, because then we can try and go with the bass line right there. Right there. Normally, when you make beats, you start with the melody or chord progression, or do you ever start with drums? Um, I used to be like, all right, I used to be a big Three Six Mafia and Zaytoven fan, so I used to start off every all my drum, like everything with drums. <coughs> but then uh, I started smoking too much weed and like doing shrooms and shit. So you want to hear like the melody and stuff. And if I'm working off of a, a loop, I usually just kind of like chop out the parts I like. And then go straight to the drums. I feel like uh, out of like the creation process, I make better drums. Like I was a drummer and a bass player when I started off. So like in my musical career. So like I try to go straight to like, all right, bet you find like the groove you want, and then you just start making the drums. And then once you start making the drums, that's when you start getting the energy to this. You know. like always a fan of like what your drums are doing try to mask like everything kind of like interchange stuff so like my snares and my 808s i like to kind of like all right bet this is like one of my favorite like snare rolls that it's just like real simple. Like, this guy right here so i like to emulate with this shit copy that go find one of my 808 notes this is like 137 i can kind of get real funky and trappy with it like that one right there It'd be great have that kind of flare on it because then it's like and that's just the midi that you have saved yeah yeah oh man when it comes to midis jesus richard scores i have like Man, you could name it. That's just one of them. Then, like, chords, drums, melodies. Um, I'm all about efficiency, man, uh, especially with the drums and shit, because, shit, that little random shit that just saved me 20, you know what I'm saying? Trying to be all extra and tweaked out. Yeah, it saves a lot of time. Yeah, bro. So I just try to keep it real, like, simple on my end. Because then it's like, because be honest with you, rappers don't want it to be too complicated anyway, bro. Like, that's when you lose them. That's when you lose their ass. So it's like... Does anybody want a secret? Does anybody want a fucking secret? Right now. So when it comes to 808s, I 
though everybody likes to be tweaked out and put things on it, I really don't even put anything on it besides this LFE 360 5.1. If you put that on there and put it at, if you have FL or whatever you want to do at your mix bus, I put it at 20%. Um, I could just bypass it. You can hear the 808. With it active. Without active. Something so simple, it rounds out your 808. I end up even like shortening up the wave and length of it just because like it brings out a low end frequency. All it does it is is a low end distortion plug in. It really doesn't do anything besides activate the low end of your frequency with a little bit of grit. So since it's giving you that grit on your low end, it's going to make it a little bit more punchy. So that's why I took out like a little bit of the of the eight wavelength, but it allows me to just like have a crazy punchy 808. I don't care about it clipping. None of that shit. It don't even fucking matter. But yeah, that's like one of my favorites of like all this shit. You have a question in the chat too. Do you put anything on the master channel as you're making the beat? Hell did it know when I bounce that bitch out, it has nothing on there. You like when they say use your ears, they're not really being full blown truthful. They're like, yes, you use your ears, but like trust your sound system, trust whatever you have. Uh you'll start seeing like certain shit should be at a certain level. Like when I start mixing things down, like I, I don't mind it all peaking whenever I'm making it. But like whenever I start tweaking, then that's whenever I'll start adding like extra stuff. I'll be like the the engineer and like, all right, bet everything that guy with the little tweaks, I'll put an arc compressor in front of it and start fucking with how much I'm gonna be giving out. I'm always a fan of like your drums should be loud as fuck. Rappers want it to be boomy. Without my, without my 808, ain't that bad. I like my snare and 808 loud as fuck. And I still didn't finish my swing of this because like it still got to be trapped up. And so even even as an engineer, you don't mind uh, clipping in in your no. DAW. Fuck no! Like wh what's the worst that's going to happen is you know it's loud and like you're you want to get the groove like it should be about your groove it shouldn't be about anything else besides like yo am i feeling this shit right now and once you get like once you start feeling it then you start taking away you know what i'm saying that's when you start like soloing things out and having that and then like start tweaking shit like not everybody's blessed like myself that uh have augsburgers so it's like you know I'll be able to tone down the mix and tighten it up as much as I want to. But it, like, even then lately I've been using headphones, been making beats at random spots and shit like that on the go. And it's still the same. Once you start figuring out frequencies and you start doing the math of how, like, you know, figuring out your delays by the milliseconds, all that things, you'll start knowing where shit should sit at. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, like, you, I don't even believe in having anything on the master because, like, what? It still has to get something recorded over top of it. As an engineer, I'm like, dude, don't be having it go slam too, too much. They got to go record over some shit or, like, sing. But for the most part, they want that shit boomy. As an engineer, I have so many people talking to me, can you turn it up? Can you turn my headphones up? Can you turn my headphones up? So I don't think an artist is caring. And then whenever you hear it finalized, it's that's we, all, we know it's pain at our level. That's not the final. That wasn't how they got the beat. When you hear it to the world, that's not how they got to be, for the most part. Yeah, and the Osbergers that you reference, those are the acoustic pedals. No, they're the speakers, the monitors. Oh, they Augsburg. make monitors. Yes, Augsburgers are like they're <coughs> they're the Bugatti <coughs> of speakers. <coughs> if you want accuracy, these are it. These are it. You could get performance and accuracy. I have two. I have four fifteens and four 18s and two ribbons and their new sound like how the setup in the eq system it's literally having like near fields but just giant i get the performance aspect and i still get to be able to tighten that shit up like i have i actually have
actually have my speaker down low, so I don't like it, like the mic and shit don't pick up and like go crazy because it'll be hot. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. So we got the t- we got like the the pretty much the premise of how I want like, to do drums. And then I just do a simple ass switch up because an artist needs to be able to count. You know, a lot of these guys don't know how to count, so that's how you give them a chance to fucking count. I always just switch up the hi hat. I'll throw on like an Effectrix on there. I, I'm a nerd with that shit, so I have like this pr- couple presets. Like I said, if I'm gonna sell a kid, I'll probably sell like a lot of these presets, these FL presets, because then it'll go, it'll show motherfuckers like, hey man, it's just a lot about fishing. Shit. <laughs> gives it a nice little switch up you know what i'm saying on like your hi-hat because i like to just do one-on-one on on, like my hi-hats of for anything for when it comes to just like efficiency see like this little simple one-on-one so when you're formatting are you formatting based on eight bars or or four bar sections um four bar sections so you see right here i'd like uh i mapped out the eight bar section but here's like the first four Here's the second four. So I usually end up making like this will be the hook. Like, you know what I'm saying? Since I have symbols in it and shit like that, like this will be the hook format on on the beat. Because that's when everything's all like the crescendo, everything's all put together and shit. So now I'm just going to map out all the verse parts that I'm going to want for it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like... Because once you do this, like once I got the hook, like I already got the hook drums. So now all I got to do is start taking away for the verse. You know what I'm saying? Start switching things up. So I already have it. So now I got to just go find the pieces I want. So that's a good part for the verse. Yeah, that's a good part for the verse. Whoever made this shit went the fuck off. They was on some shit. I know that's just a lead, but like that was some drum starts out hard as fuck. Yeah, that was hard. We could do that for a switch up. Dude, that's sexy as hell. Whoever did this, uh, what's this? Iso Dope Beats? Man, if you're in the chat, man, you went the hell off. Like, this is. Like a tight ass, like, cause even with like how I tw- tweaked it up, it still sounds like so, like we're in like fucking in the matrix right now. So let me go and arrange my drums. Cause like I said, I like to just format it real simple for a guy. Like uh, most of these artists, they want 12 bars, maybe eight bars. I used to just only give them eights cause I like, get it real fast in and out. But um, I'll just map it out for a 12 bar. So let's copy and paste that. And then I usually. <laughs> I can't help using crappy, simple ass, like old school sounds, bro. Like, I love using this gunshot to signify the verse instead of like a symbol, like on the one. Like, I just love you know, it's using. coming back because of the whole drill thing. Well, that, but like, they do it for, they, they have like the more higher pitch one. This is like the mixtape. You remember, this was like the mixtape yep. one where they'd have like, you know, what you had your the DJ set up. And, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I like to use, like, really, like, still simple-ass shits that, like, I could go show, like, some of my drum kits that are, like, literally uncompressed old-ass drums from probably, like, 2008, 2009. But that's why I like to use this. But Drill definitely uses the drum, the uh, the gunshot. Because they try to use that, you know, Jamaican gunshot, though. But it's another day, another topic of culture, not music. <laughs> But uh, all right, bet. So let me track this out. And then now I get to do the fun part where it's like.
And since we have 137 at 137, we can fuck around with some one third chops. Ah, where we go, man. Kids, once again, like I said, use your fucking middies, bro. Because it makes your life 20 times easier. chops and all the extra shit but due to time i'm just gonna keep like you know what i'm saying i'm gonna track this guy out put a nice little tag in it and keep it moving so i feel like it's already there because shit we shouldn't be over here going all the way over the top it's not like every song is going to be the fucking hit and not <laughs> And I say for these things too, if you guys like get these people's stuff, if you could get their tags too, that'd be like love as well. Cause like, I always feel like tags are the watermark for everybody. We all need our tags in there. Um, I don't like just having, hearing one producer tag, like unless the other producers don't have tags or something like that. But you know, like I said, for efficiency purposes, yeah, today it's cool, but. Maybe moving on if you guys can get the tags from these guys. <laughs> Go on, Rachel. Okay, so that was about a half an hour for, for one beat. So it looks like this is going to be a productive session. Yeah, I'm trying to make it very productive. I'm not trying to like keep it like real fucking bullshit, wasting guys' time. Cause usually whenever I make beats, I don't really don't try to be over here uh, killing myself. You know what I'm saying? Like it should be fun. Like it shouldn't be over here having all this extra shit. I should save this. I didn't even save it. Wow, guys, I was shot out here. I definitely didn't even give a fuck about anything. This could have just crashed on us, and we would have just been like, ha ha. That would have been tragic. We've never experienced that kind of tragic. So oh, it happens. It happens to everybody. I've had it happen to me in front of like some big people. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> it's the worst feeling. I, it's There's no coming back. You just got to just retire yourself from the session. <laughs> and there was no auto save. Oh, bro. This was like, my, my whole computer just died. It just didn't come back on. Like, oh, and that was the end of that whole computer. Like, yeah, this, this computer just, like, it was the last rodeo for that one. Like, it was one of those moments where it's just like, yep, this is embarrassing. And, man, that was a hard-ass beat. I so dope. I don't want to fuck this nigga name up. Do you remember who who was who was in that session when you had that? Oh, uh, Juicy J. Juicy oh J. God. Yeah. So that was the end of the session then. Well, no, that was the end of Ricky P's beat. Everybody then moved uh, on to the next person. 
and yeah, it it happens, you know, and you just learn from it, you know, uh, learn from having making sure your equipment is good, uh, make sure that you're just not put in that situation like unless it like has a random like freak of nature type of situation but it wasn't it was just me to be honest with you it wasn't me taking care of my own music shit i was touring just not giving a fuck like that shit ain't cool this is not cool uh, i had to take responsibility on that one but uh juicy's a great dude he uh, shout out juicy j done hit me up many a times come through the studio um that guy's a wizard. He still uses the MPC. Nigga is like still co- collectively better than a lot of motherfuckers on his like worst day. And but it just only prepped me to just you know be prepared. Uh, not everybody can get you know the greatest equipment. I was one never really one of those guys. Didn't really have the means for it. But let's go to the next one. I'm not trying to be in here. That's emotional. Ooh, that's sexy. By Twano. Hey, Twano. This thing crazy, boy. I hope he's in the chat. I definitely yeah, hope he's in the chat. Yeah, me too. I hope all these cats are in here. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's he's in the chat. He says thank you. Man, well, I know you was on some good weed that day. I don't know what it was. But my thing is, I always tweak somebody. Like I always pitch shift it, like just in case, like you know, because I'm realistic. We got to send these these stems out to everybody. So like I try to like tweak the sound. That's why I have like my preset. We gotta make some player drums on this. Ooh, who was this? This? How, can you ask him how old he is? You can let me know what he says in the chat. This is some grown ass fucking sample he was on. <coughs> he is 21. That's fire. You on some shit, my boy. Stay going ballistic. Stay going ballistic. You are on your way. I don't need to tell you. The, the, the sample's telling it for you, man. That shit. Percussion swing. Yeah, how do you, how do you determine what you rap on and what you submit to other artists? I try to keep it mostly 
uh, myself or like, cause lately I've been just using the, like getting on the younger homies that I collab with their stuff. You know what I'm saying? Cause it, I like going outside like of like my spectrum. Cause when I first started making songs, it was just all me. Like I didn't even care who the fuck like the beat. No, I'm just going to get on it. But now I just try to figure out like, you know what I'm saying? What the producers like type they're on. Like, you know what I'm saying? If they fuck with my music, then it's like, hell yeah. Then I might, you know, hop on a collab type joint, but for real, for real, it's either mine or like the ones that I feel like really are already working on the Ricky P projects. You know, I'm open to work with people, but when it comes to creation, like my art is like really like me venting and like having like, you know, my moment of like clarity. So it's not like I'm like, whenever I make my music, it's not like me trying to be a rapper or anything like that. Like that's me maximizing my time. And being able to get like some shit off my chest because shit, us all of us creatives have something to say, especially every rapper, every beat maker, every producer, everyone to fucking call them because everybody's the fucking same anyway. They all make a song today, every beat. I bet you any money you make like five songs to each beat you make. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no comment. <laughs> Bro, it doesn't matter if it's good or not. Like, I make a million trash songs on, like, right now I already have, like, three to this shit. You know what I'm saying? Who knows what it sound like, but, you know, hey, this shit is crazy. So I want to fill in all these drums, shit. Punchy ass kick. You dig? You gotta go to the you dig pack. You know what I'm saying? Cause the first one in there is real punchy, man. was 
on that baseline. That ass, was that a, a live baseline or did you use it like a, a VST? Because you was gliding, my boy. You was gliding. <laughs> Yeah, he says he used a uh, contact uh, expression. A contact? Boy went the hell off. That boy, <laughs> he made contact with that goddamn man. Yeah. Cut out for a second? No, nah, just with those strings. Oh, yeah, like he was like, started bring up the list day.
Yeah, I just want to say I love all the networking that's going down in the, in the chat right now. That's fire. Everybody should be networking. Anybody that's in here, uh, hit me up on a DM on Instagram or uh, Twitter or anything like that at the real Ricky P. Um, send me links to your stuff. I'm trying to work with everybody, man. Uh, I'm not one of those bougie ass guys, man. I love working with motherfuckers. It's just super tight right now, like. It's a We gotta switch out that that simple for that gunshot. I need you, uh, after this, you gotta DM me on Instagram or something so I can get your uh, email. So, I can, uh, so, you know what I'm saying? So, you can, uh, or I can give you mine so you can send me your tag. <laughs> Played that out, or if he hit that in the piano roll, cause that shit is real strummed out. Just fire. Generally, when you're making beats, are you kind of plotting on their destiny, or are you more just focused on getting the beat done, and then you you think about? I definitely, I definitely just try to get the beat done, but it's it's in human nature to like hear somebody on there. You know what I'm saying? Um. But it's like I really just try to get the beat done, and then like as like you start getting like the groove of shit and start bringing it to life, you'll be like, oh, okay, cool, this could kind of go to somebody, or this can kind of go whatever. This is real jazzy, but like you know, putting certain drums to it and shit like that, you could it incorporates a lot of different people, you know. But do you find that you're usually pretty accurate with that, or like is it the beats that you think are, are going to be for Wiz that you know? Jay wants, or is it is it the beats that you think are gonna go for a certain type of artist? Go to an artist that you wouldn't think would have even gravitated towards that beat to begin with. I feel like it's a lot of either those ones that are like I really don't like. I don't really play artists like every beat. Like you kind of have an idea, like hey man, I'm gonna go through like a, a general folder. Like I kind of just really go like chronological order, or like kind of like their vibe. But uh, ultimately, they be picking the, the difference. Like, pull up, like, Wiz passed up on that beat. So it's like, and then came back to it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like, six months later, you know? Uh, the, it's up to the artist's, like, vibe. I've noticed that. And it's just like, dude, you could be you could be one of their main producers. But, like, if you're not in a room and knowing their vibe at that moment, like, you know? You could probably have a whole bunch of their type of beats, but if it's not the vibe at that time, like, you know, like the song Black Magic that I did for Trippy Red, like that was the third beat I played, but it was like 
in the warm up to like I felt like to the beats that I thought he would like, you know. Okay, but so so when you made pull up, were you like, this is definitely for Wiz, but he just I didn't thought, see. Yeah, because like yeah, we were making that was like right before we were making like Cabin Fever three, so like I was like making a lot of like you know those trappish type beats, real simple. Like and at the time, me and DP Beats, shout out my homie DP Beats. He, we were like, uh, you know, like FL has that little timer on the uh, beats that like on your little session, like how long it takes. And like we were trying to make like beats fast as fuck, and that was one of those ones. Like yo, I thought that was gonna go. I played it for him. He he passed up on it. But then Uzi did like a whole song to it, and then it was like kind of like whenever I was trying to get my publishing deal, I was like shopping around songs to publishers, and then like we was just like, what the fuck you doing with that? He said, take the verses off. Let me do something. And then it went fucking. It went up. Then uh, uh, no, he had TM redo the 808, and then like that shit went up. But like that beat. So was it, like, it took it took another rapper, in this case. Yeah, it took it. another inspiration to get on it. Like yeah, you know, like or sometimes the beat might be there, but like they might need a cadence. Like he needed the cadence. You know what I'm saying? Like Uzi had a really good cadence on that song. Like you know what I'm saying? His verses were like, they were good, but like they could be better. But like he did the song legit, no bullshit. Ten minutes, like. I've never seen somebody do songs that fast. It took me longer just to set up the, the Pro Tools session than the him just do his takes. He did like three takes on each. We did two songs. He did like three takes on each one. And like, they were like, so it was like really like kind of like loose ideas, but like the cadences were really good. So it's like, he like sometimes you need that extra cadence to get you like, okay, cool. That's the vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the team effort in it, you know? Uh, but... That's why, like, I, I tell producers, don't be discouraged. Like, if they say like next beat, because like they're, they're pretty much saying they don't like the beat, but like it might not be the vibe. But like, fuck, it might take the homie be like, yo, that's hard to be like, yo, what you mean, like, and they're like, yeah, man, I hear you, like, yeah. you know, and then it goes, yeah, that's the beat that they want, you know. 